to uh, the video, everybody. This is uh, my uh, progress of what I've been working on. It was the most voted for item on the community poll, so I do one once a week, and uh, you can see me on at least once a week on the Farvifian Guard channel if you want to see me uh, commentary, I'm doing commentary on games. So uh, this is going to be an interesting one. I'm going to show off a few things. Uh, not all of these are painting progress, but um, first off, this old um, Death Guard, I don't actually have his original backpack. I don't know what happened to it. But uh, recently, my father had sent me uh, a number of my old things I had left at home. They'd been uh, uncovered recently. And I was like, oh, cool. And here's one of the items that I got around that same time. And uh, just to give you an idea of how much the skull creep is, this is one of the uh, Death Guard from, uh, oh, God, I forget what that box is even called. But, yeah. Nah, definitely not been happening, as GW would say. Along those lines, I have been uh, reconditioning this Space Marine hero, I believe, Captain. Now, his arms and legs are off right now. Uh, whoop, I immediately dropped them. I'll put them over here in the background. Um, and his head's not glued in. Um, I'm not going to wiggle it out right now. But... Um, yeah, I've just got done cleaning him up for the most part. And I'm not going to clean up everything because some of it you're never going to see. Uh, and I plan on getting him taken care of. Um, not painted just yet. Uh, I've been working on this guy that was shown off a little bit on... Uh, okay, let's see if we can get it to adjust. There we go. A little bit on uh, the Reaper one. Uh, I haven't got m too much more done on him, but I plan on uh, to working on him and finishing up my word bearers. Um, so he's been, he's actually surprisingly big. I ended up, uh, when I got him, having to cut off his old base and uh, rebase him um, just because of the condition he was in uh, the plastic glue that was used to uh, hold him together. I couldn't really remove anything without damaging it, and... Uh, I just figured, why not take the base and just glue it to the top of another one? Worked out fine in that case. Uh, the other thing I've been working on is, I ended up with, um, oh lord, uh, the Age of Darkness box. I ended up with some of the guys out of it. And I did not like this axe. It went all the way down to here somewhere. It looked absolutely ridiculous. So, I wanted something that looked a little bit more like uh, an Ono or a Japanese battle axe, so I cut it to get this kind of more uh, wood cutting axe look, and I still got a little bit to do. I gave him a, the one of the Mark III heads, I haven't put the crest on just for uh, ease of uh, work right at the moment, and I gave him some of these, uh, I believe they're from the old Stern Guard kit, um, shoulder pads, and I decided to keep this, I'm going to call them the Headsman which I thought was clever and not very much. Uh, he is going to end up with a, uh, a net back uh, cape that's going to come up to over where these little chainmail things are. And he's going to be um, a part of one of my uh, my forces I'm working on in the side, on the side. But uh, yeah, I wanted to change him up a little bit and make him mix him up a little bit. I like when the older Space Marines had a little bit of a mix of everything. Um, from there, I worked on a couple other things. I'm not a fan of Primaris by any regard, but I had been given this as a gift by a, a family member. Let's see if we can get him to uh, focus. Um, camera. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so I actually started doing a little bit of work. The sword slash hand is from the old Mark III kit. I gave him a pistol from the old uh, Tactical Space Marine kit. He's got a tactical head, helmet on. I cut some of the little things off here. I cut that stupid thing that Primaris have where they have around their knee guard, those little extra bullet catches. I really hate that about those new designs. I think they look stupid. 
So I cut those off. I gave him an older backpack and some of these older uh, shoulder pads I had. And I'm going to paint them up. And I did take off, because this is a Black Templars uh, model. The Black Templars uh, icon that was on the chest. I carved that off and carved it so it would look just like a normal tunic. Um, yeah, I, I don't plan on really doing anything. But I wanted to kind of put my own mark on him. I wanted him to look like he was in uh, errant armor. So uh, this is what I came up with. I thought it would look nice. I replaced some of the old chain with this skull that I'm slowly getting reworked. And you know what? You get a gift. You don't want to let it go to waste. Outside of that, I was trying to find some of my non-40K models. And I just wasn't having any luck. So I got this, um, I believe, uh, Marshall. And I'm planning on... Uh, painting him up because I have a really old start collecting mechan or Skatari uh, box. I can't remember. Um, and I haven't put all of it together. And I was like, oh, so I got this guy as a birthday gift. And I'm planning on uh, painting him up. Now, this is my own personal mix of a primer between Steinol Res Gray and Steinol Res White. I mixed it up to be closer to uh, Gray Sears primer because I don't have a setup to do uh, spray uh, spray uh, priming because of where I live. It's a little too hot and uh, there's too many children nearby uh, to do it safely. So I have to do it hand brush and this is the way I, I uh, mixed it. I have my own mix of it uh, off to the side. Um, from besides that, I have these because uh, my brother really likes the Sisters of Battle, and he'd gotten the um, the Adaptus Soretus Sisters of Battle army set way back when they first came out, and then the edition decided to change. Um, so I've been putting these together and uh, doing some basic basing. Now. The orange paint in there, it doesn't matter, the, the coloration of this stuff. This is baking soda um, mixed with uh, glue, water, and a paint. And I used an orange paint, and that's mostly to help uh, keep it together when you, you do your own basing mix mixes. You can add alcohol, uh, like... Uh, and it will harden these to like rock, but I haven't done that because uh, at the moment I hadn't planned on it. Now, one thing I did do is you might notice there's some chunks in there. I would take the little cutoffs from when I was cleaning models off the sprue, chuck them in this mix, and you get like little rock pieces and things like that. And uh, let's see. It's a nice fairly decent and very inexpensive uh, mix. The backpack, of course, is held on by blue tack. Um, I'm going to advise my brother when if he gets any more of this unit to go with the mace because these spears are really, really thin and they give me uh, anxiety <laughs> when I'm moving them around or putting them together. It's a really cool unit. I really like the aesthetic of the Sisters of Battle, and I especially like this mo this unit. Um, but yeah, I've been putting those together for him. Eventually, they're going to get painted up when I have the time. And another thing I had was a couple years ago, I got a start collecting of the Thousand Suns. And on top of it, because I was an extra good boy that year, I got the uh, Scarab Occult uh, Terminator Squad, and I made this guy. Now, there's nothing that amazingly different about him. Right now, he's not on his base. I haven't finished up. Uh, I decided to make a turn um, from the traditional blue that was used by uh, Games Workshop. Now, this is a Scale 75 color. I can talk about it more in another video, but I liked the way this looked, uh, especially with the gold trim and all that, compared to um, 
what what they were looking like when I originally put them together. They're brighter. I like the color. It's a little bit more matte. It's actually really easy to work with. And of course, the uh, thing up here, that's my first attempt with contrast. So yeah, he's not based right now because I removed him from his base to change up that whole thing. And I'm going to close it all up with, uh, whoop, as I hit my lighting array, two things. I got this guy from Tortuga Bay, because uh, I had it mentioned in one of my quitting GW. Um, people mentioned uh, Tortuga Bay. And I painted this guy up. Now, he's not complete. I still got a few things uh, to handle. The basing, just in case you're wondering, is a uh, Grimdark City Rubble from Geek Gaming Scenics. The tuft is, I believe, an army painter tuft. And the primary black on this is a uh, Vallejo uh, gray black. Black or gray? It's one of those. Um, gray sear is where the white is. I haven't finished a couple of the elements because I was kind of experimenting uh, with the colors. Now, this unit is a big boy. If you are looking for something that is more along the line of a firstborn, but around the size of a Primaris, you got a good option there. And I'll show some more of them off um, as I get time or people want to see them. But these are really good models. Um, there was a little bit of cleanup that was required, but I love the way the, they're going with the uh, the artistic interpretation of the uh, setting. I really like how it looked. I especially like that they had the little triangular feet thing I've been complaining about with the Mark III uh, altering. I, I think that looks more aggressive and suitable for something that's supposed to be a super heavy kind of aggressive armor. And the last thing is anybody who knows me knows that I, uh, for the most part, uh, haven't been playing any degree of what would be referred to as modern 40k. I basically play something that I refer to as alternative K. <laughs> or uh, in some cases I called it Forever War. And uh, it's a complete divergence with the original Eye of Terror co Codex. Um, and this is one of my current projects. It's not finished. Um, I would just got done working out the coloring and then some of the uh, iconography that you can see that's going on there. Um, and just what I wanted to do with it. Also, it was my first attempt working with the Wargame Fanatic color. So I can talk about that in the future. And it's one of my first ones with uh, working with also huge miniatures, which I plan on ordering a set of and talking about. So stay tuned for that if you're interested. Uh, but this is part of one of my uh, my alternative version of 40k, where uh, a certain legion that was thought to be destroyed returns, and they return through a thing, and I go through. Uh, Basically, I have a bit of campaign talking about the War of the False Primarch, what it was really about, the High Lords of Terra basically covering up uh, the truth of what was going on. And this is going to be for one of the air quote lost legions um, being part of the setting. Um, so, yeah. I basically do not play the current 40k. I do not have any interest in their setting. And effectively, I kind of do my own thing with uh, the, the folks that know me. If you're interested in knowing more about uh, this individual paint job, let me know. I'll talk about it and the reasons for it. But it's supposed to be kind of aquatic themed to a degree. That's the reason it is done the way it is. And, um, yeah, I put a Chaos uh, Legionnaire arm on. I cut the spikes off. I trimmed some of the more aggressive elements off. I, if you know this arm, you know what I've done. Um, and I'm planning on mixing a lot more of the Chaos Legionnaire bits into these. And I hope Games Workshop 
decides to do the Mark II kit because that would make uh, taking some of my bits and mashing them onto a Mark II uh, Marine a lot easier. But um, that's what I've been working on. Uh, hopefully, this is at least entertaining for you guys. And, uh, well, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.